your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm doing well. Today what I want to do for the vlog is I want to go down to Hollywood Boulevard. There are a slew of signs that go up and down Hollywood Boulevard kind of telling the old history of what used to be there or the significance of the building that still might be there with something else in it from what it originally was. So I thought today why don't we start at the easternmost side, which would be, I think the first one starts at Gower and Hollywood Boulevard. We'll work our way down one side of the street, all the way down to La Brea, and then we will flip around and we will work our way back up to Gower and we'll see all these magnificent signs that tell the lost history of Hollywood. Hope you enjoy this, Days with Jordan the Lion. It begins right now. And as you can tell by looking at my walls, I am indeed moving out. As we walk along, you'll see one of the reasons why I'm moving. Look at all the garbage. This is everywhere, all over the neighborhood. What we're going to see today is definitely not Tony Curtis's Hollywood. Our first stop is right here. It's now known as the Fonda Theater. Let's go over and see the placard and see what it used to be. So here you'll see this is site number 20. I couldn't find a map online so I couldn't start at number one, but you'll see here this was the Music Box Review Theater. First known as the Music Box Review Theater, it opened in 1926 as a legitimate theater specializing in musical comedy. Let's get us a little closer picture up here. Featured silent film stars such as Bess Barriscale, and Helen Jerome Eddy. Later it was used as a broadcast facility in 1976. It was renamed Hollywood Picks and converted to a movie theater. In 1985 it was returned to a legitimate theater and named for actor Henry Fonda opening with 12 Angry Men starring Charlton Heston. The nice thing about those plaques is they do say at the very bottom where you can find the next location. So this one said a block up and to the left we will find one on Vine Street, which I believe is the Taft Building. Kind of surprising to see that the Pantages Theater doesn't have one in front of it. This, as we're passing along, is going to be the new Amoeba Music. So as we walk along up here to the corner of Hollywood and Vine, you see Right up here along the side, it says Taft Building. That's our next location. The Taft Building, 1680 Vine Street, Hollywood's first high-rise office building. 1924, provided for such famous personalities as Will Rogers. The offices of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences were here from 1935 to 1945. In the 1940s, legend has it that Clark Gable and Jack Warner would play craps in the basement on their lunch hours. It was built on land owned by the pioneer Hollywood Taft family. The conservative near Renaissance building was designed by Walker and Eisen. And here it is. You can see out front, right above the entryway arch, has one of those nice old Roman carving style letterings of the Taft Building. Here's a better view of the Taft Building. So I see our next sign directly across the street over here at the Hollywood Plaza. I'm not going to do every single one of these signs they did because they kind of go up and down different side streets, but I'm going to stick with mainly ones that are on the corners or directly on Hollywood Boulevard. The Hollywood Plaza. So here's our sign. It says one of four major hotels built in Hollywood in the 1920s. Jackie Gleason, Doris Day, Joe Frisco were one-time residents as well as many movie and vaudeville actors who were performing locally. Once housed one of Hollywood's most glamorous night spot, Clara Bow's It Cafe, which I have vlogged. Go look it up. Named for and operated by the sultry, roaring 20s film actress. Stars such as Gene Autry, Milton Berle, and Pat Buttram would gather outside and trade jokes. And George Burns and Gracie used to have an office here. And if the name Pat Buttram 
or Bertram or however you pronounce his name sounds familiar. That was Mr. Haney on Green Acres. Ah, the sounds of the Hollywood streets. So like I said, we'll go ahead and hit one side of the street. We'll do the uh, south side and then come back up the north side. Kind of interesting to see. I never noticed this before that Mariska has her star right next to her mother, Jane Mansfield. Here's the star of Elizabeth Taylor. Right in front of us is the Cosmo Alley. And right down this alley at the end, Arthur Lee and Love used to play at a place called Beto Lido's. But also, right here where this dumpster and everything is, that little alleyway was the alleyway from Charlie Chaplin's The Kid, which I vlogged in the past. Okay, approaching the corner of Hollywood and Coenga, we have the Owl Drug Julian Medical Center. It says, part of the original 160 acres that was owned by Harvey Henderson Wilcox and his wife, Data, that they would name Hollywood. After his death, Data Wilcox married into the Beveridge family, a member of which commissioned this building in 1934. This is the finest example of Art Deco streamlined modern building in the Hollywood Historic District. Its windswept tower and its horizontally reinforced windows design typify this architectural style. So here from across the street you can get a better view of all the architectural stylings and how it looks today. The very bottom is now a newsstand. That used to be my doctor's office though. Now we're over here at Raymond Chandler Square and right across the street from the Owl Drug is the Raymond Chandler Square. It says, gangsters, showgirls, filthy rich, women scam artists, and savvy private detective by the name of Philip Marlowe haunt this intersection. They were the characters in a series of mystery novels written by Raymond Chandler, who designated a fictional building at this intersection, the Coenga Building as a central point of Philip Marlowe's activity. Some believe the bank building on the northeast corner was the inspiration for the Coenga building where Marlowe's office was located. So they believe that that bank building over there was the one. A couple of different people played Philip Marlowe. Humphrey Bogart, Elliot Gould. Here's the intersection of Wilcox and Hollywood. I used to live a block north of here on Wilcox and that was named after Henry Wilcox, the founder of Hollywood. And I just have to include this mural because this is classic because it's been here for as long as I can remember. It's been here since I moved here. And seen in La La Land. So we'll just keep working our way down Hollywood Boulevard until we find the next one. I love this little mural on the gate. All right, we're passing the Hollywood Toy and Costume Shop. That does not have a plaque. The Crest Building up here does. Built in 1935 in the Art Deco style as S.H. Crest Department Store. 1947, Frederick Mellinger moved his laundry business, Frederick's of Fifth Avenue, from New York to its West Coast location here, creating Frederick's of Hollywood. He restored the striking Art Deco architectural detail. The architecture, or the architect was Edward Sibbert. Fredericks innovated countless styles of under fashions, including the world's first push-up bra, the first front hook bra, first bras with shoulder pads, and first water bra. And there's the building. So that was news to me. I didn't know that was the first West Coast Fredericks of Hollywood. I guess I should have known that. Maybe it was Fredericks of Hollywood when I moved here and I just forgot, but yeah, sorry about the noise. There was a kind of a homeless village right in front of there. So if I wanted to include it in the video, I just had to talk over them. Oh, now this is interesting. The Cherokee building. I don't know anything about this one. Give you guys a little bit of a view of what it looked like in its heyday. It says the Cherokee building was Hollywood's first drive-in business. It catered specifically to the automobile by having a large motor entrance at the rear of the building where motorists could park, then walk through a Spanish courtyard complete with tiled fountain into the rear entrance rather than using the Hollywood Boulevard entrance. The Larry Edmonds Bookshop, a theater and film only bookstore opened here in 1938. 
true. And as you can see, Larry Edmonds is not in the same exact location, but it is still in the Cherokee building. And here's the front. And here it is today. And here you'll see that this was the Hollywood Center building. The first home of the Screen Actors Guild was located here. 1933 to 1936 in a one-room office on the second floor. The Writers Guild of America also had its first office here. Albert Sheets Circus Cafe, a glamorous underground cocktail lounge. The restaurant opened in 1935 in hopes of attracting celebrity union members who could hop on an elevator and in seconds rub elbows with other entertainers. The building is an excellent example of art deco style known as zigzag. Now RuPaul has taken over the space. Look what they did to Debbie Reynolds. Savages. Looks like we have about three of them here on this next block. You can see the Egyptian theater sign here along the railing right here. So here we have the Egyptian theater. Sid Grauman's first Hollywood movie palace opened in 1922 with the premiere of Douglas Fairbanks' Robin Hood. Egyptian sentries patrolled the roof line while harem girls ushered patrons to their seats. The Egyptian was the birthplace of the movie premiere with searchlights crossing the sky, a red carpet from the street to the theater entrance and celebrities being introduced over a loudspeaker as they arrived in limousines. It was restored by the American Cinematic in 1998. Okay. And of course it's closed, but here it is. And this is the person throwing things at me and screaming while I'm filming. It's ironic that she would be tearing apart a sandwich and throwing it at me when she lives on the street. You'd think she'd want to eat it instead, but whatever. So here's our next stop, the Pig and Whistle. This has an interesting story to it too. So here you can see it says, Sydney Hodemaker opened Hollywood's first family restaurant that welcomed children in 1927 and featured rich hand carved wood decor. Popular tunes were played on the pipe organ. The Hollywood Glee Club performed Friday evenings. Loretta Young dined here Sundays. Barbara Stanwyck dropped by several times a week. Other regulars included Spencer Tracy, Howard Hughes, Buddy Rogers, and Shirley Temple. The dancing flute playing pig can be, still be seen above the marquee. He sure can. Look up here. So here we have the Christie Hotel. Built in 1922, the Christie Hotel was the first of Hollywood's luxury hotels. It offered a stylish innovation, private baths, a first in the community. The Georgian styled architecture is not common to this area. Arthur B. Kelly was the architect. It was owned by Al and Charles Christie, two of early Hollywood's most powerful movie moguls. They were the first to open a studio in Hollywood, Nestor Studios. Now it's a Scientology building. And there it is today. Now you see this Hollywood theater sign over here. That's now the Guinness Book of World Records Museum. And that was the Hollywood Theater, obviously. It says, this was originally the Hollywood Theater, the second movie house in Hollywood and old is still standing. It was remodeled to its Art Deco appearance in 1938. At the time it opened in 1913, General admission was 10 cents. Loge seats were 15 cents, and children were admitted for a nickel. In 1930s, it was one of the first marquees to be changed from flat to triangular in order to be e seen easier by motorists. So our next one is right here on the corner. It's the where Ripley's is now. It was called the CE. Toberman Company building. It says originally a four-story building, the classical facade was added in the 1920s. In 1935, the top three stories were removed to create the building as it is today. Hollywood's most prolific builder, C. E. Toberman, established his first office in an earlier building at this site. 
Over a 70 year period, he erected 29 commercial buildings in Hollywood, including the Chinese Theater, El Capitan Theater, and the Roosevelt Hotel. So what that building once looked like with stacks of floors above this is now what you see today. And look at him wearing a mask. Now we're rounding the corner and you'll see the Hollywood Museum. We've been there many times and vlogged at the inside many times. And of course that has a history. Here you can see it says Max Factor, a Russian immigrant pioneered screen makeup for which he received a Special Academy Award in 1929. He opened the Max Factor Hollywood makeup studio in 1928 where he taught Hollywood stars such as Lana Turner, Rita Hayworth, Claudette Colbert, and Jean Harlow to enhance their beauty. Specially decorated rooms were designed uh, to complete, to complement the patrons' complexions and hair colors. Architect S. Charles Lee designed and remodeled the building 1935. And there's the Max Factor Hollywood Museum building today. So now we're walking up to the El Capitan Theater. I see it has a sign. Here you can see it says the most lavish of four Hollywood Boulevard theaters designed for live performances. Opened in 1926 featuring stars such as Joan Fontaine, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Lon Chaney Jr., Buster Keaton, Clark Gable, Henry Fonda, Jason Robards, and Will Rogers. It was renamed the Paramount Theater in 1942 and became a movie palace. Citizen Kane premiered here. Its original name and appearance were restored in 1990. The exterior is Spanish colonial style and the interior is East Indian. Of course, it's closed at the moment, but we can still take a look at the front facade. Then right next to it's this Masonic temple I'll do my best since there are stickers on here to read it to you, but it says, the Masonic Temple and neoclassical revival design built 1921 was the work of John C. Austin, who designed LA City Hall. The memorial service for silent film actor D.W. Griffith, considered the father of modern movies, was held at the Masonic Temple after his death in 1948. Among the stars who did filming or held events here were Charlie Chaplin, W.C. Fields, Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, Bob Hope, Dean Martin, and Jerry Lewis. And now, it's the home of Jimmy Kimmel Live. I've been in there many times. And here's our next stop. The famed Roosevelt Hotel. I always love this Charlie Chaplin plaque on the side of the Roosevelt. So you can see it says built in 1927 by a group of celebrities that included Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Louis B. Mayer. Site of the first Academy Awards in 1929. A hideaway for Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, Marilyn Monroe did her first commercial shoot by the pool. The Cinegrill, which opened in 1936, was a popular night spot giving stars such as Mary Martin a start. Regular patrons included Frank Capra, Dick Powell, W.C. Fields, Errol Flynn, and Ronald Reagan. And here's the entryway. And then right beside the Roosevelt, you'll see there's another one right here. Now this is the Johnny Grant Building. 1995, this building was named in honor of Johnny Grant, Hollywood's longtime honorary mayor. Walk of Fame chairman and Goodwill ambassador. Built in 1919, it housed the Meglin Dance Studio and later the Arthur Murray Dance Studio on the second floor. Gypsy Rose Lee rehearsed here in the 1930s when she was performing at downtown's LA Paramount Theater. Lucille Ball and Harriet Nelson shopped in the Irene Somerset dress shop on the ground floor. Whoa, what a history, huh? So, here would be the ground floor where the dress shop would have been and uh, the building. And there you can see they have a little plaque of Johnny Grant out front. Mr. Hollywood. I actually did see him quite a bit when I first moved here. So weird to see all the souvenir shops closed. I think I bought my very first shirt in Hollywood here. All right, we are at the last building on the south side of the street. This is the Hollywood Professional Building and it says this building comprised five stories when it was built by prominent Hollywood developer C. Toberman, referred to in his day as Mr. Hollywood in 19, 1925. In 1928, he added the final story to the Gothic-style structure of the Academy of Motion Pictures 
Arts and Science had offices here from 1930 to 35, as did Screen Actors Guild 1939 to 56. Ronald Reagan, who was SAG president from 1947 to 1952, got his first taste of politics here. It was designed by architect Richard King. Let's take a look at it. And here it is today. Looks pretty similar. Couldn't even fit the whole building in frame. All right, my friends, I know I said we were gonna see both sides of the street, but when I started editing, I realized this is really two vlogs. So you're gonna see one side of the street today, and the next time you come back, you will see the other side. You'll see the north side of the street and all of the memorable history there. Believe me, you won't wanna miss it. Thank you, Brenda O'Brien, Jonathan Bordeaux, Penny G, Kevin Nelson, BBAC1723, Diane, Kevin Ridsdale, David Doyle, and Brian Bowen for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time with the rest of the history of Hollywood Boulevard. Have a great night, and goodbye.